Good morning, what's poppin' friends? Today is the day yet to come is going to be tonight. Well, my time, tonight. So happy time zone wherever you are. Uh, it's gonna be midnight drop here for myself and for Laurie and I don't, who lives in Jersey? One of you lives in Jersey. Anyhow, it is morning here right now. I am in my good day pajamas. Uh, I'm gonna get officially dressed for my day after this. I've already been listening to podcasts on um, marriage and saving my marriage and marriage psychology this morning. So I'm already in an emotional place, right? But I still haven't watched the men talking at the White House. I have been holding on to that. And I was just, I decided I was okay, I'm just gonna watch it on my own and that's it. But you guys were all commenting on my butterfly practice and my mic drop practice video. Quite a few of you commented about loving the White House thing. So I was like, I want to watch it with you. Let's just be emotional here because we know I'm going to cry. There'll be timestamp below where it starts, but two things. One, I'm kind of going to shoot this live stream version and upload it with very few cuts or edits, but also uh, streaming. I'm absorbing on my marriage psychotherapy podcast today because as of tonight, I will be dedicated streaming the new album and the new song because streaming numbers count. This is not me trying to make anybody feel bad for however much you do or don't stream. If you can, stream on the high side of things. Album purchases have always been how we got the guys in the top of the charts and Billboard changed rules so that those won't count as much. We are gonna rely on streams. This is a really big deal. If you don't have a Spotify premium account and you've never had a Spotify premium account, send me a DM on Instagram or Twitter or leave me a comment below how I can get hold of you. I will send you a link because if you have a premium account on Spotify, a premium account on YouTube, the charts count those higher. Those streams count for more, like three or four times more than if you have an ad-based account. And I've got a link for you to have two free months of Spotify Premium if you've never had it before. That's the only way that, that they allow their free trial things to work. But that's a big deal. You won't have to pay anything, but your streams will count more for the guys. Let's get into this now. I've already got it queued up. The guys are beautiful. I watched the day of the briefing. I watched it live with my kids. My kids were so confused because I burst out crying as each of them came up to the podium and spoke in Korean. I got really emotional. I bet some of you did too. There's no way I was the only one crying. And seeing all the journalists so excited and flustered, it was beautiful. And of course I got emotional. My kids were confused. I cry a lot around here, more than any child should see their parents cry. My marriage is in, I don't even know the word for it, but it, things are not good. And my heart is broken because things have been bad for a really long time. So my kids see me a lot. And of course they've like witnessed me after the loss of my grandmother, which was a big deal. So they associate crying with being sad, grieving, missing someone, being in pain. So they were utterly confused seeing me just burst into tears, watching the Dinah Haze, as they call them. And I had to explain, sometimes we're so happy. We're, we love someone so much and we're so happy for them that the feelings are big and come out of us. Sorry, I'm just thinking about how, how great it was to see them there and to hear the journalist clamoring out questions to them and and BTS fighting like it's so it's so beautiful. So let's watch what President Joe has to say with them. We're not watching to see what President Joe has to say. We're we're watching to hear what they have to say. I know they spoke for they said 35 minutes. We're going to listen to them for it looks like just under five minutes. I want to see the clip and everything. Like is there a longer clip? Because this is from the White House official. There was like a clip of them. Was this just for Instagram of them walking through the grass and President Namjoon saying it's nice to meet you or we've been looking forward to meeting you Mr. President. Oh my god. <laughs> Yoongi looking at the podium. That meme will live on. That was so funny. And the jokes about it being uh, the sugar by the artist notebook set with Yoongi Marry Me written real big on it. That was a really funny meme. That was, that was an instant classic. Sugar that make you feel at home. <laughs> I love seeing him do finger hearts, President, President Biden this week. Oh! I'm gonna lose it, I'm sorry. BTS. 
Today we're here to speak with President Biden about anti-Asian hate crimes, Asian inclusion, and diversity. Okay, I can't even make it past the first 30 seconds. But look at them. The fact they all came in to speak on such an important issue. This is their fourth time speaking in America. I know one of the UNGAs wasn't actually them in America, but we're going we're gonna to call it. About such important issues. And I've commented before about Stop Asian Hate being such, I mean, you know, there's no way, there's no way to fall in love with them without realizing how much hate that Asian Americans, Asians, Asians, forget that Asian American part, Asians face. Um, but here in America, that has been a very allowed tolerated racism. And that's only now starting to be part of the dialogue of something that has to change. It's the, what is it, the overprivileged minority concept so that racism's okay and until brutal crimes have been committed against them in the last few years. But the brutal crimes were already happening against them. There have been things that happened right here in very wealthy neighborhoods in my town, in Raleigh and in Cary, against Asians that happened against them because they were Asian. And I mean in the years before this pandemic. So, but to have these men come and, all right, sorry, I'm gonna, I really am just gonna play now and knock over my cups. I'm gonna cry. Hello, we are BTS. Today we're here to speak with President Biden. This is so huge. Anti-Asian hate crimes, Asian <laughs> inclusion and diversity. Taste face. Why do they look so beautiful everywhere they go? It's like they would walk into a room with... With, um... With a soundtrack. Yes, and it is a great honor to be invited to the White House today to discuss the important issues of anti-Asian hate crimes, Asian inclusion, and diversity. She is adorable, by the way. She is. Thank God we have a beautiful human as press secretary. Wow. <laughs> yes, I'm trying not to lose it on you. Prejudice. It's meant to make people afraid. It is. It's meant to scare it's us. It's meant to make people feel alone. Into silence, into and isolation. When you all speak about it, you speak to people in a way that reminds them they're not alone. We just want to give back all the love that we <laughs> lose our voice, Sorry. like you told us. Yeah. Um, that's all we wanted. So today is a really, really historic and big day for us. We feel happy to uh, help make a positive impact, and we feel uh, the great responsibility at the same time. <sighs> Here's the clip. Welcome to the White House. Come on up here, guys. I want all 35 minutes. <laughs> I've been involved in public life because of civil rights. Even back then, famous artists helped move people. What you're doing makes a big difference. Talking about how we have to communicate <laughs> is important. When we first heard that um, the White House and President Biden invited us um, because of the Stop Asian Hate and the Anti-Asian Hate Crimes, we were like, this is it. Why not? We have to go. We have to go to D.C. We have to see you. And thank you for recognizing all the efforts and we truly feel that our time truly pays off and pays back. This important month here in America, 
a lot of our Asian American friends have uh, been subject to real discrimination. We want to say thank you for so long. sincerely for um, your decision, um, like such as signing the COVID-19 Hate Crimes Act into law. We we'll truly appreciate the White House and the government's trying <laughs> to find solutions. Show you back you there. Doing, but don't underestimate. It's not just your great talent. It's the message you communicate that matters. And this is one president who appreciates you. Wow. <laughs> I have to tell my mom. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, we thank President Biden and the White House for giving this important opportunity to speak about the important causes, remind ourselves of what we can do as artists. Once again, thank you very much. Woo! <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm not a pretty crier. I hate that for you. <laughs> Who's watching me anyhow when they're on the screen? I think I mentioned a couple of days ago, maybe. Oh, I really wanted to, like, I hoped, you know. I am so looking forward to the bank tan ball on this. Um. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so I think I mentioned a few days ago, I, I I was on TikTok and just like stumbling, you know, through, I ended up on a live stream of a few Asian men cooking, they were making seafood soup and some different things and the comment section, like the live stream comments and these men, one of these men in particular, he, he continued to do what the guys do when they're live streaming, you know, read the comments and then go back to what he's doing and then read the comments and go back to what he's doing and there were a few commenters that just kept commenting really horrible things, horrible things. And my heart broke because this is a human being who merely had the audacity to exist as an Asian person and start a live stream. That's it. That's all he had to do. That man could have literally just turned the camera on and sat in front of it and done nothing. And those exact same comments would have been... And it was all based on nothing other than, based on nothing more than his, his facial features. That's it. That's it. The hate that was geared at him was based on his facial features. And correction, the hate that was lobbed at him was based on the hate in the person who was writing those comments, the people writing those comments. And there were quite a few people. But they were taking their hate out on him because of his facial features. That was it. That was enough for them to actually hate this person enough to try to make this human's life miserable for having the audacity to exist. This is, you know, this isn't something that's specific to Asian people. It's something that minorities face. That if you are black, if you are black in America, I can't speak for anywhere else, and I'm not black, obviously, but if you're black in America, you know what this is like to be questioned, to be hated, to be ridiculed for your features and having the audacity to exist. That's it. Asians are somebody who we've, and I've referenced before in another video, I spent a weekend with a family member who considers herself incredibly, incredibly progressive. She's super, super you know, pro Black Lives Matter, pro feminism, super anti everything Republican, everything conservative. Like she's super progressive. And yet she turned around and made an incredibly racist joke to me, um, mocking a Korean woman. This is actually like months before I found out who BTS was. But I just remember sitting there thinking, that was so weird and not in alignment with everything else that you're so passionate about. And I realized she didn't even realize what she said was just racist and weird. It wasn't coming from a place of hate, but it was fully coming from a place of mocking. And she clearly didn't see that that was, it, it just, but allowing things like that and feeling things like that is when you become the slippery slope toward hating. And then of course with the pandemic, the amount of hate that has been targeted at people walking, like I said, having the nerve to exist. By the way, Yoongi can't stop smiling these days. Did you notice that? That man can't help but smile. This is... 
This is a good era. I don't know what's coming tonight. I don't know what's yet to come. I am scared for tonight. Um, but be prepared. I'm going to cry. It's just going to happen again. Meanwhile, I'm going to go start my day, get dressed, and I will not be uploading a reaction to yet to come for 24 hours, 25 hours after the video premieres. One, we need to be streaming. If you're focusing on things, focus on the video. Don't focus on reactors videos that are 10, 15, 20 minutes long. Also, and I'm not, this is not me throwing shade at every single reactor that posts stuff in the 24 hour. I get it. People want to get stuff out while it's super fresh. And if you're like the first to post, you're going to get more views. And there's one reactor in particular who's like the king of getting the reaction out fast. And there's a handful of them that always do. But I'm just going to go on a limb here and sound like a bitch. I won't watch their reactions at all now because I realize they don't do any reactions unless they get it up almost first and they don't do any reactions. Um, this one in particular doesn't do any reactions unless he chops it the hell up and he, he pauses it like every 10 to 15 seconds and woo. And then like, I have to go back and we have to watch this part again. But I've actually figured out and learned a long time ago, if you do that, the system, the, the, the spider they have that goes through YouTube looking for copyrighted content, it won't catch you. Hive will not allow reactions in the first 24 hours. They will block, they get them all blocked. Like before they even get posted, just trying to upload it. Hive blocks all reactions because they want you to stream their song for the first 24 hours. And then Hive allows um, they remove the block. This is how it's been the last several. They can get through the system and get you to watch their reaction anyhow, like an hour after the video drops. So they're first to the market. But number two, that means they're also monetized. So when they get a half a million views, one million views on that reaction, they're making a ton of money off it. And not that making money off of like what you're creating is a bad thing, but they're actually making the money that the guys would be making. And it makes me doubt the sincerity of all that woo that they get off of. So yeah, I just did a full rant against a few reactors that I like them as people and I like their personality, but I don't trust their reactions anymore now that I know why they hit pause and back up 150 times. You don't get huge accounts without knowing how to work the system. And that's fine, but I, I don't know. I want to, I want to know that the people who I'm watching genuinely love the guys, like genuinely love the guys, not what the guys have done for them financially or popularity wise, but I know I might be here talking and looking like I'm yelling from a glass house, whatever. But anyway, I just want to let you guys know. I will be reacting. You will not see that reaction until Saturday. God loves you. I love you. BTS loves you. Love yourself. And if you feel small, silenced, isolated, love yourself. Speak up. Um, find that energy. Find... Anyway, I love you. Bye. Oh, also, yes, I am wearing Jin's pajamas, like I said. This is because... If Chris Martin can wear the gin pajamas to dinner, I'm not actually at the White House. And you know some of you watched this in your pajamas. I don't have pants on. Don't tell me you're always wearing pants when you are catching up on the ridiculous amounts of bank tan that comes in.